I always wanted to have a farm because uh, food is very cultural for me. I'm Filipino. I'm a first generation American and I always wanted, that was the way I knew how to express my love. We need major scaling companies, companies that have a product in market, they've got financing, they're growing and scaling and our top 50 here was really around identifying those companies in partnership with our corporate partners. I still became a grower for a family farm. I was the only grower that was a woman. They hired me because I could speak Spanish, but my whole team was mostly uh, 40 to 50 year old men. <laughs> and so earlier on, I had a hard time trying to get them to, to do the work that they needed. So I was a grower who had to designate tasks, and if they had a question, they would actually ask my superior, who was a man, instead of me, and then I would have to redirect. My supervisor could not speak Spanish. Uh, there's a massive shortage of labor. As Mike said earlier, people are not you know, coming into the industry. The average age is getting older. Uh, and we're not seeing um, uh, new people coming in. And then as in, a, as in the tech space, I generally have to uh, I have to talk second. I can't talk first. That's just something that I've picked up. It still happens and I just accept it and move forward. And I am very, uh, as a woman, I'm much more cautious about what I say and how I say it and ensuring it's more uh, neutral. And We will uh, do our accelerator, accelerator launch in, in April. Uh, we run the Tri uh, Accelerator Program demo day. So we think that most of the companies we invest in are going to grow steadily and happily. I'm delighted to see Trace Genomics who won our event last year in the audience and it was a great experience for them. So you should see and talk to, uh, to the folks in terms of how to The story started more than five years ago when Diane and I met in graduate school. Both of us were very passionate about making an impact on the way in which uh, we can arm community members with, uh, with a way to stay one step ahead of disease, right? So what we've done is we've uh, built a really simple soil test for growers and farmers to be able to look at the biology of their soil. We all know that the soil biology plays a huge role in yield and crop health, uh, soil health and sustainability. So when we say soil biology, we mean the billions of living organisms that are present in every teaspoon of soil. Some of them are harmful to the plants, some of them are beneficial, so they're good for the plants. The reason why we delved into ag tech was because you know we're very close to Salinas, we're very close to um, the vegetable bowl. We quickly recognized the growers telling us um, that they need a way in which they can measure soil health, soil disease. It was impossible to miss out on that opportunity. My grandfather was a farmer, but a very small scale farmer where he had his own farm that he fed his family with. And so we're definitely entering into a slightly different world um, than what we've been used to. And so what we do is we, we listen uh, very carefully to, to folks who know what they're talking about and mentors who've been able to guide us along some of the, the tricky challenges. Yeah, we have been in AgTech now for over two years and at least twice a week, three times a week, you know, we're out in the fields in Salinas. Um, and so that feedback loop, like, you know, where we are we are technologists at heart. Um, our team, we have an amazing team to help accomplish that. Um, but we also make sure that you know, we're getting in that feedback from, uh, directly from our customer base, the growers, who are in desperate need of this technology, um, and bringing that back to our team. So we are making the products, uh, making our technology fit the needs of the growers. In Salinas, agriculture is very traditional, and so even though they do these processes that are very lengthy, it's because they're used to it. And so even though it takes longer, they know it's right because they've been doing it for so long. In general, farming um, still uses paper to track things, um, and the reason for that is because some of their processes, um, timekeeping especially, is pretty complex. 
um, and even more complex in this area because the crop is rotating two or three times a year. So our company, um, we do equipment tracking, um, timekeeping, and field scouting right now. It's a mobile app. We don't have any extra hardware. That's another thing that makes us unique. So all the data collection is just through your smartphone. <laughs> I was studying computer science and then I did work in ag and I wanted to stay in the area. Everyone that I graduated with has had to leave the Salinas Valley to find a job and I was lucky enough to find one here. What makes us unique is um, knowing the ag side and knowing their processes and I guess having some connections with the growers already. My parents are immigrants and they, uh, they were field workers when they came to the U.S. I've always kind of been around it. My dad started his own produce company. Uh, when I was younger and so just kind of growing up around it. Having connection with our customers, with our growers and with the valley, we don't want to come in and show them this is what you need to do. We're also learning with them so a lot of it was a learning process. Would you change anything That's right now as it is? Yeah, but like, like the would same you rather structure have is just like opposite. You know? Yeah, so the same flow like yeah. one, two, three yeah. and then... Trying to implement that software and telling them we can give them something that works that's better. They've also had other companies come in and say that, but a lot of times it's been companies from Silicon Valley or areas that aren't huge on ag, so they come in from a different perspective. And so what makes us unique is um, knowing the ag side and knowing their processes, and I guess having some connections with the growers already. Yeah, once we start messing with it, for sure, we'll have more feedback. Yeah. We'll break it. <laughs> you guys will make it better. Yeah, I think so. And growers speak to growers and say, this is working, and um, we grow from there. Only after I spent days, uh, you know, shadowing a grower, that I realized this is really, really hard work. And I had a very different kind of appreciation of, you know, the, the food or the produce I buy now. Ag shift in agriculture technology, we want to solve some very real problems which are facing the small and medium commercial farms. We just moved out from a smaller office and we are in the process of getting a bigger office, which is the reason why we are doing this shoot uh, at my home. We have built a platform or a system which helps growers make much better decisions on their farm. So if you look at an organic farm of any profile, typically you'll find that they are growing uh, more than 10 or 15 crops at a time. So what the system does is puts a lot of data and technology to work and helps growers understand your true cost of growing one pound of carrot is $4 per pound versus the cost of growing something else is this much. It helps them make many different decisions which before something like AgShift was just based on intuition. And we will then take all that data and automate the, the compliance reporting for them. Especially organic farm, but even local farms, you're usually dealing with 20 or 30 different kinds of reports which you have to do. It's very time consuming. A similar analogy would be uh, TurboTax. I think we are at a right point where we can put a lot of these innovations to work, you know, to make small farms more sustainable and hence help, uh, you know, what we are really trying to accomplish as a society. Uh, when we say we have to feed 10 billion people by 2040, I came here from Vietnam as a refugee. Growing up in Vietnam, I've seen the war and witnessing the cost of malnutrition um, in children and in women, I decided I would look for a solution, a more like a food-based solution for the problem of vitamin A deficiency, which is quite prevalent in Vietnam. Vitamin A deficiency, a disorder which is just easy to, to solve, but it's still so prevalent. Vitamin A deficiency compromises the immunity system um, it's very important in normal growth of children, but also for eye health. In, in Vietnam and, and, and other places where vitamin A uh, deficiency disorder is quite um, prevalent, you can see a lot of women when they get older and they have night blindness called xerophthalmia, and that's irreversible. So I decided that um, 
Northern Vietnam would be the study area. And when I went back there, I realized that meat and fish were quite expensive. And that's the, that is the natural source of vitamin A. And I identified it among the fruit and vegetable that people have. Red melon, the fruit to me that stand out, that's the red melon. And when I was little in Saigon, I know that my mother usually at that time, she would get the fruit and dye the, the rice with it, make it red, red rice. And the color of it is so strikingly I mean, red. And that's the color of beta carotene. So beta carotene actually is the precursor of vitamin A. I just have the hunt and this is, the, the food was really rich in carotenoids. The source of lycopene in this country is tomatoes. And the source of beta carotene in the Western diet is carrot. Red melon contains 70 times more lycopene than tomatoes. And 10 times more beta carotene than carrot. I came up with a way so that the farmers can then use whatever they have to make the oil and then keep that oil in their household. <laughs>